Hey everybody, welcome back. I'm the Gerbil, and in today's video, we're looking at Grand Arena Champions uh, for uh, Saturday, April 15th. This is a really, really, really good matchup. Uh, I've been on a losing streak as my last video uh, showcased. I think I'm going to win this one. I do full clear my opponent, and this is a really fun one. Um, there's a couple Hail Marys and some really interesting stuff in here. So if you like what you see, if you enjoy any of it, you learn anything, give me a like and subscribe, please. I'd appreciate it. So this is, I think, my second time ever to encounter Dr. Afra. I'm in Kyber 2, very close to Kyber 1, but well, maybe halfway, I don't know. Um, I've fallen a bit lately. And and what I discovered today is that CLS with the Chupio Datacron level 9 just absolutely obliterates Afra. Um, I actually tried this out before I went to SWGOH.GG, looked at the counter guide and was like, oh yeah, that, that's a thing. So if you run into Afra and you're just not sure, CLS works like a charm. Grand Inquisitor also with his level 9 Datacron right there. Notice no 7th sister. This is uh, My opponent did something really creative on this one. They have this 7th sister Datacron which is also really really good. I think people underestimated it. In 3v3 it was astonishingly good if you um, if you had a chance to use it. But they took out 7th sister, put in 8th brother and uh, put Seven Sister, you'll see later in, in the battle. Um, Grand Inquisitor is of course one of my favorite characters. I love the Inquisitor faction. I really hope we get more Inquisitors or Purge Trooper to send, um, you know, synergize out and maybe eventually work towards two full Inquisitor faction teams. That would be fantastic. I mean, Inquisitors are gonna be in the new Ahsoka show, right? Oops. Uh, sorry about that. If that's a spoiler, it shouldn't be. If you watch the trailer, you would know that. Um, I think that that's actually um, Eighth Brother in the Ahsoka trailer. Further spoiler, um, this is just my speculation, 100% speculation. But I went back and I watched it in like super ultra slow mo, and uh, the helmet is the same. But not so sure because I, if I recall, yeah, see, Eighth Brother has some weird feet, and I. The dude in the movie didn't have those feet, so maybe it's not 8th brother. Anyway, probably wrong, but yeah, so Sith Triumvirate with Talon and Savage rocking the double Omicrons, um, the, the the Inquisitors just have no chance. They, they, they can't hang with this. Um, the Sith Triumvirate is just way too strong. <clears throat> my, uh, Michael's team here, Michael's my opponent, you can see he's got Relic 5, I think, on most of the Inquisitors, had the Datacron but Relic 3 Sithies, all of them are Relic 3, except for Talon, who's 5. Of course, you need Relic 5 Talon to unlock Star Killer. otherwise she probably would still be like Gear 8. Although, she's not bad. I mean, she, if I recall correctly, uh, I gotta go back and reread the kit, but if I recall correctly, she provides like auto revive once, I think, on the Sith leader, if it's a Sith, I could be wrong on that. And I think she gives the whole squad like 20 speed or something, which that's nice. I mean, can't go wrong with speed, right? Um, so Sith Eternal Watt Tambor versus Ray. So this, this used to be my standard go-to counter, and it is for a lot of folk, but Ben makes this much scarier because um, Ben's special that applies healing immunity cannot be dodged, evaded, or resisted. Much like Purge on Inquisitors, much like almost every new character for the last year and a half has a non-resistible um, debuff, which makes me really wonder why we have potency and tenacity in the game anymore. If, I mean, if every new character has things that cannot be resisted. I mean, let's see here, just out of curiosity, uh, who's the latest character to come to Star Wars? Uh, it's gonna be, the absolute latest is gonna be, um, typing. I can't type and talk at the same time. Yeah, so anyway, we lost, right? C loses. So, Sorty is another squad that I never come across. Um, it's just not something I see. Uh, so I was very unprepared in this one. According to Swaga.gg, uh, General Grievous is a solid counter to this. Um, and I was doing pretty good, but we're going to lose this also. Uh, these are the only two losses we're going to have here. Oh, look at that. I spelled Swaga out wrong. S-W-G-O-H dot G-G. Okay. Um, yeah, so I've really got to work on Newt. But yeah, it looks like Grievous is a counter to Sorty, but the, my opponent Michael put uh, Dark Trooper over there, which 
I didn't. I don't, I don't really know how Sortie works, and I don't know how effective Dark Trooper is overall in there. I think it really nerfs Imperial Troopers, so I'm not sure if this is like a, a go in the future, but I mean, look, it's, it is pouncing my GG, absolutely. Okay, so latest character to come to the game is gonna be, I think, Seer, no, Marin, probably, right? Uh, and I think I'm saying those wrong. Seer, I think, I'm not too sure. But, okay, I'm, I'm just going to do a quick search here. Unresistible, or let's just do the search for resisted. Um, and, hey, would you look at that? I don't see it anywhere in her kit. Um, the ability starts, can't be evaded, so her base, her special cannot be evaded. That's impressive. It doesn't look like it. Resisted. Yeah, that's impressive. All right, but let's go check out the Night Sister, um, the new Night Sister. Okay, so uh, where are we? The new Night Sister. I don't remember her name. Oh, Wampa. So, Wampa trying to um, clean up, and this is kind of, I think, my first little hail mary here. Wampa absolutely can beat Sorty, but I think there's. I mean, again, I don't know how the Sorty kit really works. But we're going to ramp up that stacking offense here, and we're going to start hitting Sorty in the face for, like, uh, actually, I think if you slow it down, it's more of a chest shot. Man, like, Wampa, that's not cool, bro. You, you're, you're hitting the lady in the wrong place. That's not nice. But we're hitting her for, like, 160, 170,000 at times, and it's not even taking away that bonus protection. See, there was 90, there's 100. Uh, 107 we're, we're getting up there it's it's getting up there 98 wow it's, it's going down wrong way wrong way wampa 99 and then I'm not again I don't know the kit I don't really know why dark trooper is staying in stealth that's got to be something to do with sortie um, but I come across dr. Afra and sortie so so seldomly like seriously outside of conquest I just do not see him so I have to really like tip my hat here to Michael for putting some really uh, good defense up. I mean, like, Michael's defense here really, really, really threw me for a loop. But this Wampa, you can see I've got it on full automatic, and I've sped this up. Like, we're at like 200% times four game speed. Um, because otherwise, it absolutely would have timed out. Wampa totally, totally, totally would have timed out right here. Um, and that, that I have to admit, CG, this is the most engaging, fun, like, gameplay I've ever seen, right? When you can just kick back and hit auto for five minutes. Kind of like the current Galactic Challenge. You, you throw Magna Guard in with whatever you got, and you hit auto, and you wait. Today, I literally waited 11 minutes. Um, had one minute left on the clock and got the win. I was like, yay! All right, so where's the new Night Sister? There she is, Marin or Mirin. I'm not sure which one it is, Marin or Mirin. All right, so I'm looking in her kit. Um, resist, resist. Wow, does she not have anything that's non-resistible? I don't believe that. That's that's good. Um, so taking in my full Jedi Knight, Ma Jedi Master Luke squad to clean up Ray was uh, really agonizing and kind of painful, but I think it was the right move just because. Ray is so... Ray, I don't know, right? It's like you can go into a Ray game, everything's going fine, and then suddenly, boom, you, you're dead, right? Um, and the the dynamic between Ben and Ray is just so nauseating at times that I just absolutely wanted to make sure I cleaned this one and move on. Like, I, I hate to use a full squat here on this, but I, d I just had to. Okay, I'm, I'm looking at Marin's kit. I have to read this real quick. Okay, okay. Uh, the next time is afflicted with a debuff. Marin loses. Can to be targeted damage. Inflict two stacks. All recover. Deal special damage. If this defeats an enemy, inflict purge. Dispel debuffs. Well, it looks like so Marin and Seer both can be resisted. But, um, yeah, Dr. Afra has unresistible stuff. Ben has unresistible stuff. Trench, I think, has unresistible stuff. All of the Inquisitors have unresistible stuff. Um, that's been a big, long trend for, like, a year and a half. And it looks like, it looks like with the new Kyle Kessa stuff, they're, um, kind of backing off on that. And that's good, because, yeah, I mean, if everything's not resistible, why have tenacity? Um, Jawas. So, Jawas have been a point of, like, contention for me lately, because... 
um, I've been losing with my Jawas because just the way the dice roll um, or the way I've been playing it, Cara Dune gets back up. So this time I really agonized over whether or not Scavenger should blow everyone up when they had like 18 stacks and I made the right choice. Did I say Kyle? Cal. Cal Kestis. That's who I'm thinking of. I just typed in Kyle. Cal. Nope. Kestis. There we are. So we're going to go... Ah. Kestis. Okay, I'm looking at his kit real quick. Ewoks versus First Order. Back to my roots, baby. Love this, love this, love this, love this. Um, they don't have the highest relics, of course, so, you know, can't... Uh, can't really hope for much here, but nice big hit there from Wicked. 57,000 from an Ewok. Um, Hux is absolutely the target that you need to drop if you were going to try to repeat this matchup. You have to get Hux out of the way because he, he when he has advantage, I believe, is the, the condition. Enemies cannot gain turn meter, which means he just shuts down an Ewok squad, right? Every time an Ewok uses a basic, they gain 20% turn meter, and then Logray passes the whole turn 20 percent turn meter with uh, his prophetic vision I think and then Wicket every time he scores a critical hit with his AoE per critical hit everyone gets 10 percent turn meter and then Ewok Elder's basic gives everyone 25 percent turn meter himself 50 percent there's a, a variable condition on that point is there's an ex there's an incredible amount of turn meter gain on the team and uh, Hux just says nope that ain't happening so yeah you gotta you gotta get rid of Hux you get rid of Hux then you're actually not in a bad place. It's pretty easy to, to, to win at this point. Um, crew, of course, if he's if he's super, super well modded, uh, will be really, really hard to take down just because his health recovery, but it uh, didn't, didn't look like an issue right there, did it? 63 banners. See, you can never go wrong with that. Now, this item team, um, we're going to come back to that in a second. Instead, we're going to do something really, really fun here. We're going to take on Starkiller with Imperial Troopers. This is my first time to try this. I've never done it. I read this one over on swaga.gg counters and I, I just am like, I really don't know what the kill order is, but of course we got to get past the taunt there. So, I mean, old Ben is uh, obviously where we're going. All right, resist. All right, here we go. So I'm looking at Cal. He inflicts ability block, buff immunity, which can't be evaded or resisted. So, yep, there it is. I knew, I knew it had to be somewhere in the new set, but yeah, anyway, moving on. So uh, yeah, it looks like Imperial Troopers really is a thing against Starkiller. I wish I had known that a long time ago um, because this was way easier than, than I expected it would be. Um, I usually send CLS there and wow, do I wish I had like, you know, 10 CLS squads. That would just be... That would make GAC a whole lot more enjoyable if I just had <laughs> 10 CLSs. It's fast, it's efficient, it beats most teams, right? So yeah, look at that. This is, this that, that was like laughably easy, 65 banners. Um, I'm gonna have to try that a few more times before I like really, you know, take that to the bank though. But yeah, it looks like a thing. All right, here we go. So this, this, um, this looks like absolute 100% overkill, right? I mean, they're gear 12. The one thing about Aiden that I have learned over over the last year or whatever is never underestimate an Aiden squad. Just, just don't do it. Um, any team that has mass assists, which actually includes this one, uh, is going to have a difficult time even against like low gear Aiden teams. Because every time they assist, uh, Aiden is healing the the, the target like 20% health and protection or something absurd like that. But the reason I did this, um, one is again, I just kind of wanted to, to make sure we get a win. Two, Bosk lead allows you to recover banners really, really easily uh, be, by having all that, that uh, protection recovery. Like every time you debuff the enemies, everyone heals up. Uh, three, Finnick is going to hit five times on each of her basics. So even with the mass assist, you're not going to kill anyone. But if you can hit the weakest target just once or twice with either boss mask assist or griefs, then you're going to trigger the contract. Because Bosk's contract says 
uh, you know, you hit you hit the weakest enemy 20 times, I think. So you do a mass assist, everybody attacks, Django hits twice, Fennec hits five times, and you're pretty much halfway there. You do it twice and you've got contract. Once you get contract, then Mando unlocks the disintegrate ability. Um, and yeah, it's really hard to kill off these these troopers because of their, uh, their healing revitalization through Aiden, but they cannot survive Mando's... Uh, his disintegration rifle so it's pretty much it's a guaranteed win as long as the item team isn't just too powerful like if they if they had if, if Michael here had like a relic 7 death trooper or something then I would not have done this because uh, they would have hit hard enough probably to kill off Bosk in the first couple turns and then it's just game over but yeah never underestimate item squads oh here we go disintegrate three two one oh no i saved it i saved it for Aiden herself look at that that was sweet of me wasn't it prioritizing the disintegration on Aiden, which we don't even get to use why the flamethrower just trying to recover banners don't get the kill but heal up oh well it's over it's over um all right next up this one this one like really throws me for a loop. So w w watch this. This is this is epicness of Seven Sisters, um, Datacron here. So watch this. We're gonna go tap tap, and then she's gonna go, no protection, one shot on Gas. Now why did Gas not sit down? I don't know. Somebody might want to explain that one to me in the comments. I'd appreciate it. But I'm like, wait a second. Gas has absolutely no protection. Um, he's got protection disruption and that comes from the level 9 datacron on seven sister which by the way goes poof in four more days I'm so sad about that so then he took damage sat down and then stood right back up I again I don't know what's going on there I'm absolutely just baffled by this that this whole dynamic here and then of course they're gonna kill off fives first and uh, which means I don't get the sack and uh, which means the rest of the team doesn't get all the bonus stats and I'm just like oh man like I really wish I had left arc trooper at gear 12 at gear 12 the team was so much more potent but oh well we got the kill on Basti so I, I can't complain too much um, really, if I can just get rid of Basilet or, or Darth Revan, usually I'm okay. But in this particular match, I don't really think I have anything left in my roster that could probably hang with this. Um, in fact, the next match is the really, really cool Hail Mary that just like I, I had to like let out a, like a yeah, whatever, woo, when I won. <laughs> uh, I had absolutely no expectation of winning. Uh, yep, yep, so this is not looking so good, but we're up. We're, we're going to be able to outspeed them. Uh, there you go. Take out Darth Revan, and then at this point, it's game. Yeah, bye-bye, Seven Sister. I think that was a really interesting inclusion, uh, although it does break up the Sith Empire faction, which means I think Darth Revan's leadership... Um, if the whole team is Sith Empire, I think they do extra critical damage, like 50% critical damage. Um, and so they don't have it. So here we go. We got a Hondo. I never say Hondo. I don't, I don't know what to expect. And then they've got an Omi Zam over there, but I'm faster. Um, so we get the days out on top of everyone. They hit back and I'm like, oh snap, this is not looking good. And I'm going to make some misplays in here. But uh, this was an absolute Hail Mary. So we're going to try to siphon some turn meter. We got it. We dazed uh, Hondo. Um, that was a big hit that could have gone much worse. I do the same thing in response. And down goes Hondo. And I'm like, yeah, let's kill Ara Singh. Look at that. She's in the oh no damage immunity. Oops. Yeah, that was a bad one. I should have really paid attention to that. So now I'm starting to, to worry again. But then I'm like, oh, yeah, that's right. We got Mando. Let's uh, let's put some immortality over there for a little bit of turns. And we'll get a couple pew pews in. We'll put some more immortality over there on, on Bo-Katan, I think. Um, keep her safe. No, I actually put it on dash. He's the big one. And then look, my dash shoots, his dash dodges. I'm like, ah, oh dear, this is not good. A little bit more damage immunity on dash. Just keep him alive. They waste a few turns doing what I did. And then poof, down goes their dash. And once their dash fell down, I'm like, oh, this is in the bank. Uh, this is golden. So another big splash. And we basically have the win now, right? Okay, we're going to take out Zam. So Zam's... Omicron only benefits other bounty hunters, if I recall correctly. Like, it takes a considerable portion of her speed and other stats 
and it passes them out to other bounty hunters. And it's important to keep in mind that while they're scoundrels or smugglers, Dash is not a bounty hunter and neither is Hondo, I believe. I'm pretty sure that Hondo is not a bounty hunter. So putting the Zam Omicron there, not sure what that was really doing. Hondo, Hondo Anaka. Hondo homeboy is a scoundrel smuggler support, right? So he's neutral. Uh, he's not a bounty hunter. So the Zam Omicron doesn't do anything for at least those two characters. Um, did benefit, I think, Aura and uh, who was in the back? I don't recall. So um, three more battles here. If you're still with me, the next one is like really the highlight of fleets. This one is just a stock bo um, boring profundity versus executor that we all know. There's nothing special here. We're going to get full banners, whoopty. Um, not too spectacular. So I think honestly it's like pretty much expected, right? Like profundity should get full banners. If you're not getting 72 banners minimum with profundity, then um, you need to practice the, the the turn order and the mechanics. You should you should pretty much always be getting 72 minimum. Um, and if you're if you're brave enough to go in with a fleet of only two, which I've done a couple times, um, Outrider and the Falcon, you can get like 78 banners, maybe even 79. I don't remember. All right, so this is this is like the highlight to me of the video. A lot of people put Radis on defense because it snipes a lot of banners from your opponent, but we're going to get max banners with uh, Home 1 and the fleet you see here plus Cassian. Th I've, this strategy really I've been developing for a while, practicing a lot from my al alternate account, which is much, much smaller. So basically, the the thing is the raven's claw is so underappreciated the community it didn't have a need for it when it came out so everyone tested it said yeah not impressed and moved on fast but it's actually really really good see the old saying is uh innovation necessity is the mother of invention or, or innovation right if you take home one and you strip out hans william falcon you have a need to fill that hole and through testing i found the raven's claw does it incredibly well like incredibly well um so what what happens is every time you target lock somebody you and you um, apply foresight to an ally and whenever an ally has foresight they can ignore taunt and then the Raven's Claw double taps and calls and assist if the enemy had or if it started the turn with foresight so um, even though that bomber gets the taunt so much you just basically ignore it and you kill off Ray and Poe um, and the opening move there as you saw Biston went first and he does his little go into stealth applies taunt or not taunt but um, target lock which puts taunt on bigs so your fleet is protected and then raven's claw starts doing its tappity tap spreading foresight and then when you call in cassian you strip off all the buffs on the opponents and you kill any target of most opportunity all right so anyway this is the last battle here uh tarkin executrix versus home one it's a no-brain easy win um you got to watch out if you don't do the bomb pretty quickly or timely um falcon can just obliterate you i actually recommend the tie bomber holding off if you have scythe until scythe strips away all the buffs um so that you get those those bonus stacks of whatever they're super super useful but anyway hey folks i hope you enjoyed it i really do i enjoyed it i think this was a really 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 fun uh and challenging gac i really appreciate my opponent's defense so well done michael other than that i will catch you all later thank you for watching take care bye bye